Okay then, let's make a crinoline lady. Right, bit of a story behind this one. I right. was cleaning out the attic the other day and came across this bag. It belonged to my mum. And mum had her own fashion label. Right, she specialised in evening wear and one of a kind wedding dresses and stuff, really high end stuff. And um, she also knitted. She was uh, an instructor on knitting machines and stuff. Right. And one of the things she used to do, because she enjoyed doing them, was uh, night dress cases that were crinoline and ladies. Something like the picture that's in the thumbnail, but the one that's in the thumbnail I just grabbed off the internet because I couldn't find a picture of one of mums. But the one that's in the thumbnail is crocheted, mums were knitted. right? But as I said, I came across this bag and that put me in mind of the crinoline and ladies that mum used to do. And I says, I wonder if I can turn one of them. Right, but I want to show you what's in this bag. Right, I'll be using these on something else. Right, these are vintage Swarovski crystals that we used to use on wedding dresses and evening dresses and stuff. Right, now I've been in touch with Swarovski about them, and they say yes, they are theirs, and they're from the original factory. Uh, they were. From around, they're from the 70s sometimes, sometime in the 70s. Right now, I have an idea of something to do with these, it will not be in this video, but I just think they're rather cool things. And uh, as I said, they were mums, so I think she'd get a kick out of them actually being used. Right, as I said, there's some lovely stuff in here. Uh, and as I said, the only thing I can find out about them is Swarovski did make them. Right, some here off of a card. Right. Swarovski did make them. Uh, they're from the 70s. And uh, as I said, I'll think of something to do with this. Well, I have an idea in my head what to do with them. But uh, I don't think I'll be wasting them. Because vintage Swarovski crystals probably worth a fortune. Right, so uh, that's where this one came from anyway. So now that you know where it's come from, let's get on with this video. Right now, as I said, this is something that just popped into my head last week when I found that bag of stuff for mums. I said it's something she used to do. I've never done one of these before, but I've got an idea in my head how to do it. So hopefully it works out. So uh, what I have is a piece of acacia. I'm going kind of goldy colour with this, uh, and it is three and three quarter by six and a quarter, maybe. Right. Um, so as I said, I have a rough idea in my head how to do this, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. So we're gonna design it as I'm going along. Right, first thing I'm going to do is flatten it off because I want to put a tenon on it. Slightly low. We'll be using the supernova jaws which have a flat tenon on them. Which makes this a lot easier. Should be plenty. And cut into the tenon.
sure it's square and flat, which it is. Right, and then we we'll start throwing the shape into this. Basically, I'm going to treat it like a bowl to start. Now I want the end part of this to be flat, basically, to be straight. I don't want the curve to go all the way down there. Right. You'll see why later on. cracks in this so I'm gonna have to see it but, uh, I've been watching I've been looking at this blank for months in in the shop here and in my head I said there's something in that some sort of shape in that because I never noticed the cracks when I was looking at it and then found that bag of mums and I went yes I know what that shape is on that slightly high just there, there's a slight bump just there. Got it. Right then, I'll stand and finish this bit and I'll be back in a sec. Right then, and we're back. Uh, I know I said that I was going to finish this, but I actually have to, I just thought there as I was doing, I have to put the body on it, so what I'll do is I'll put I'll put the body on and I'll finish the body and the dress all at the same time. Right, so we flip this over. Right, I'm coming back for a second here. Something happened when I was putting it in the chuck. Right. The tenon came away. You see that? Right, the tenon came away in it. So what I'm gonna have to do is return this and put a new tenon on it. So I'll do that and I'll be back in a sec. Right then, we're back and the little problem is fixed. Right, the reason that happened was my own fault and I should have known better. I made the tenon too thin. Instead of making it deep enough, I made it not only really that small. Right, the teeth and the truck grabbed it all right, but there wasn't enough wood there to hold it. So I said I should have known better, I've been doing this bloody long enough. But uh Every now and again, mistakes happen. And as I promised, I will always show them. Right now, we face this off. Just up there. 
Right, I'm going to just hollow this out like a bowl, basically. Now, what I want to do is make sure that there is straight, because this has to go on a jam chuck. So I'm going to be very careful to make sure that there is straight and not tilted out at all. And as you can see by the position of my hands, the gouge is well over. What I'm cutting with is that wing, the inside wing, the one that I always cut with on a bow. It just gives a better finish. Right. If you can avoid it, avoid cutting with that wing with that wing there because it's kind of more scraping than cutting if you can cut when you're on the inside if you're doing the inside of a bow cut the inside wing especially for your finish cut now when you get down to a bottom of a big bowl like this you might have to cut with here. Not a big bowl, a deep bowl. Now, because of what I'm going to do with the top of this, I don't want up here to be the same width as there. I need it a little bit thicker. It's still a little too thick, though. Yeah, that'll do that. Right. Now, in here, I am going to sand and finish. So, I'll be back when I do that. Alright, just going to wax off the inside of the skirt. And... Um, that turned out quite nice. Stop you. Right. Now, you'll see why I wanted to leave the top, or the base, basically, if you think of it as a bowl, if I, why I wanted to leave the base thicker. But, uh, yeah, the gold is flashing that nicely. Right, now what I gotta do is take this off and I have to make a jam choke for it. Right, so off it comes and we'll make it right, we'll make a jam choke for it. Now what I'm after for a good jam choke is the inside measurement there. If this goes out far enough, it doesn't. Right. is sleep it over five and a half inches so slip it over five and a half inches two and a quarter inches so from roughly the center I'm gonna come out two and a half because I want to work my way down to this No, that's wrong. That does not look right to me. Five and a half inches. Did I say two and, a, two and three quarters? Not two and a quarter. Twit. So we will go out to three. Because as I said, I want to work my way down to this size because I want this jam truck to be a good tight fit. Oops. There, let's.
the whole thing with a good jam chuck is not only the fit but it's the shoulder there that shoulder has to be smack on flat now I know this is gonna be too big but that's what I wanted because I want to fit this exactly to it so I'm just gonna nibble away and when you're nibbling like this what you gotta remember is you're actually taking off double what you're cutting Because let's say I'm taking off half of the gouge, right? I'm taking it off two sides. So what I'm actually taking off is a full gouge. No, too much off too much there so I'll just take that off and do it again still see the mark of where I was so that will give me a clue as to where to go you go there make very sure I'm a square shoulder again It's worth the time getting the jam chuck right. And not to get it into your head, I should just the jam chuck. This is going to be holding your piece. So it's worth the time getting it right and if you get it wrong just do what I did there put it off and redo it and there we go a good jump truck it's good and solid it's square and it's spinning through as you can see there which is exactly what you're looking for in a jam truck now I have to drill a hole in there what I'll do is I'll drill a hole in there and then I'll make sure that that is completely flat Ready here, chow. Right, now I gotta make sure that that is completely and utterly flat. To accept the uh, body. Yeah, that's nice and flat. Right. 
Now we can take that off. Now we have that part prepped. Next part is uh, what the body. I'm using for the body is wherever I put it. Where did I put the pieces for this? There. Is a piece of the core of uh, a monkey puzzle. You know that goldy bit in the middle? Right, I did a pen out of one before. Out of this before, and it's gorgeous. The pen. If you're interested in it, I'll leave a link up there. Right, now I already put a uh, tenon on this just to save time. Right now all I have to do is flatten off here. Right, an easy way of marking the size of the post you need is with the drill bit you used. Just put a scratch mark in. Right, so that's the size of the hole you drilled. So that's round about the size of your post. So yet again, parting tool. And we'll nibble down to slightly bigger than the post. Smell of this stuff when I'm cutting it. That it's the exact core of the branch of a monkey puzzle tree. It almost acts like resin. It's really cool stuff to walk. Now that's going to be too big. I'll just double check it. Too big. I learned this in the early angels. It's worth your time getting these joints to be tight. center it was born in a little bit make sure everything's got a good touch on it yeah right. now we'll join the two of those together with uh, thick CA oh. and I'll use the um, the lathe as a clamp so right so the CA has gone off and now we can start blending that body in. The reason I left the 
tenon on was I wanted to be kind of like a belt on the dress almost. do first is bring the monkey puzzle down to the width of that tenon. I'm going to switch to a ball gouge because I'm about to start cutting here as well. Now what I want to do is blend here into there in a smooth curve. Which is why I left down here thick. Yeah, that's nearly it. I'm going to shape the body a little bit first. So just give myself an idea. Let's say the proportion body head. be careful because I want the waist down here and not up there. Now shoulder wise I want to do roughly what I did on the Venus for two reasons. I want to be able to see the shoulders but i also want somewhere for the people using this uh to hold it as a handle rather than just grabbing the hat If you haven't seen the Venus video, I'll leave a link up there and below, of course. And I don't want it exactly the same as the Venus, but that kind of shape. This down. From what I can find out about um, crinolines, the actual dress hung off the hips. Now, start getting this blended. There's quite a few cracks in this that I didn't notice when I was.
I think that waist is too light. I'm going to move that waist down a bit. A bit better. Yeah, that's a bit better. Drop the waist down a bit so it comes out slightly. Now I gotta do something about these cracks. So it'll be CA again. Right then, give that CA a minute to go off. I don't like that curve there. I'll change that curve there a little bit. Right, now we'll stand off. And we'll be back in a sec. Right then, the Osha grip bit. This week I'm going to yap a bit about the Irish sense of humour. Um, which you will definitely encounter if you come over here. Uh, how could you describe the Irish sense of humour? It's very dry, right? Uh, it's full of innuendo and double entendres, right? Uh, political correctness most of the time doesn't come into it. Right. Okay, political correctness in Ireland, it's um, it's there. Oh, it's definitely there, but it's not. As um, how to put it, it's not as in your face as it is in some other countries. Like over here, if we see a black guy, it's a black guy, right? Um, because there's no use in us saying something like African American or something like that. Because it could be French, it could be English. Right. So over here, if you hear somebody saying it's the black guy over there, he's not being insulting or anything. But that's just uh, because we have so many people of African descent in Europe. Uh, unless we know his nationality, like if it's a black guy and he's French. We say the French guy over there. But if we don't know, we just say the black guy over there. And there's nothing meant by it. Right? But uh, as I said, right, where was I? Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, very sense of humour. And so political correctness is, is here, but it's not as crazy as other places. Right? Um, a typical right I sent an American mate of mine to these videos before and he came back not only breaking his heart laughing but absolutely gobsmacked at, uh, at what was being said and what was happening right? 
Okay, now I'm gonna stick a link below to this. I think they're still on YouTube. But what I'm gonna stick a link to is Podge and Rodge. Right. Podge and Rodge are they're basically two puppets. And um They're very funny, actually. But uh, if you want to know what the early sense of humor is, right? As I said, I'll stick a link down below to Podge and Rodge. Go have a look and come back and tell me what you think down in the comments, right? Um, Wait, one thing I will warn you, if you are easily offended, do not go on this link. Right. But uh, that's roughly what the early sense of humor is like. Right. So, I said it's only a quick yeah, a bit this week because the early sense of humor is quite hard to describe, it's just something you have to experience. I mean, but the whole thing is, is if you if you are over and you hear a non PC joke, don't take offence to it because there's nothing meant by it. It literally is a joke. Uh, but what you won't find is a joke that's racist. I mean, you won't find stuff like that here. Well, as I said, it, w it wouldn't be what some people would call totally politically correct. So I'll finish uh, the actually written this bit. Right, I'll stick the finish on it. And we'll be back for the next bit. Right, and just buffing the wax off. Uh, I'm not too sure about this. I think the proportions might be off. But we keep going. So it looks like at the end. This could end up being one of the ones I do that I don't like. Which happens. It just means I need to work on the design a bit more. Right, we'll take that off and we go to the next piece. So I'm 100% sure about this at the moment. Right, next bit is the hat. I already have a piece of acacia chucked up just to save time because this video is getting on a bit. What I need to do is hollow it. So the head fits in. And sits properly. Is that? That is not bad. Slightly deeper, and we're good. And he's it out. Right, I'm gonna take all that off. Right, now, as I said, slightly deeper. And we should be good. So look, how's that sitting on the head? That is too deep. way too wide so we gotta bring down the size a bit right.
slightly high for that, I think. Portion wise, that's not bad actually. I think another cut should do it. Excuse me. Uh, parting tool. And we put the peak and stuff in. The rim of the hat. Parting tool's blunt. Now, as I said, the rim of the hat. What I'm after here is like a bonnet shape. Basically, it's the same hat that I did on the Venus. Spindle gouge to shape the top of the hut. Right, that, get as much of the sanding done there as I can. So, top of the hat a bit big. No, it's not. Right, now we'll sand this bit. Right then, that's that section finished and done. I have to cart it off, flip it over so I can do the top of the hat. that little flat there to get rid of on the hat. And as I did in the Venus one, put the jars right out, see if it fits, which of course it doesn't. Right, uh, right, so it doesn't fit in the jars, so I'm going to go to the second way down, which is basically sand it, by, sand it down by hand. Sometimes it just happens where you have a plan in your head. To do something and it doesn't work. So we stick a bit of 150 on and we do it by hand. Yep, nice and chewy. Now it's just a matter of waxing that and uh, stick it to the top of the head. Now we get on with the final bit, which is the inside of this. Right then, now we do the last bit of this, just to save time again. I'm after putting, uh, I'm at the rim of this off, flattening it putting the mortise in uh, I'm using the large the large one just to reduce weight a little bit and uh, I finish it I said I think this video is going to be long so I'm just going to try to cut it down a bit um, it is a, it's another piece of acacia right but I went through the wood star and I found a piece that's mostly gold it doesn't have much black in it at all because I want the uh, the bottom of this to have a difference with the skirt if you know what i mean so we take it off and flip it around and we get to the main part of 
this last piece, which is uh, the jewelry box part. Right then, now I want a ring post in this, in the middle of it, uh, which I'm going to turn into kind of a spike. So what I need to do is cut in here. You want to have the basis for the spike, and then just start reducing down to it. Right now that it's reduced down, I just need to check the fit of this, right? Because I want this to sit inside of the inside of the uh, the base. Give myself a mark. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut smaller than the mark, and then work my way out until it fits. Right, if I mark the mark first. There. I'll make sure it lets you go in. Yeah, not too big. Just one after. So I'm just going to nibble away at the outside here until that thing fits in just nicely. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. See? It'll go in and it'll come off. In and come off. Excuse me. Right, now I'm going to start shaping the inside of this. Right, now that I have that ridge. First thing I'm going to do is turn this into a spike. I'm being very gentle with this because it's cross grain. And it could snap really easily. There we go, there's a nice ring spike. Now we'll start out in here. What I want to do is, I want to dish here a little bit, but I want to leave a flat edge there for the dress to sit on. There's a couple of reasons for that, I'll explain it in a minute. Right, basically, rings go here, and this is for like chains and bracelets. If I don't have a ridge, if I drop a chain in there, it's going to drop to the bottom of this. Right? If I left that flat, it could go, the chain could go out here under the dress, and it won't, the thing won't sit properly. So, if you're doing one of these, you need to have 
a ridge there that's higher than the bottom of this base uh, because the chains will go under the dress. I mean, it's the same with any box like this. I'm cutting upwards here, but I want one continuous arc. Now, we stand and finish that part, and oh no, hang on a minute, I'm not, because I want to do the outside of this. I nearly forgot that. Right, I want to kind of make the outside of this blend into the dress. Right, I nearly forgot that. And it's really easy, all I'm going to do is roll it. There's still cracks in this. <coughs> See there? Just fill those. I don't know what it is today with uh, cracks in wood. I just seem to be having a day where I'm picking them. Basically, that ridge there is a bit iffy, so we just take a cut across there, clean it up, much cleaner. Right, now, it's time to finish the inside of that, <coughs> and I'll be back in a sec. And we're back, just buffing the wax off the last piece. Uh, I did a little trial fit there, just after I sanded it and stuff, just to double check. And I think the base has gotten rid of the problem that I had in my head about uh, the scale of things, or the proportions, right? I think the problem I had in my head was the dress was too small. It wasn't long enough. But this seems to have started that out, so. If you're trying that, there's a tip here. Don't worry about your proportions until the whole thing is done. And that turned out quite nice. Right, I'll take this off, put the whole thing together, and give you a better look at it. So I'll be back in a sec. Right. And there we have it. An acacia and monkey puzzle crinoline and lady jewellery box. And uh, lid just lifts off as I wanted and there's the spike for the rings and place for chains and bracelets and stuff uh, I think what I would do if I was doing it again would be I'd make that curve less I wouldn't put it as round I'd bring it down a little bit more so they blend in down here a bit better but uh, yeah not bad at all so if you like that one, if you wouldn't mind, click a like on the video, and I'll see you in the next one.